guys foodies how are you doing welcome to naya sim if this is your first time of coming across this channel so you had kindly smash that subscribe button and turn your notification so you are notified each time i upload and please give this video a thumb up i appreciate you all so much and shout out to every one of you for the support you are showing me here with i am grateful so this pump colored european woman is getting lots of backlash for what she said and she was asked on a podcast why is it okay uh, she was like why is it that africans are moving over to europe she was like that it's crazy and wild and we um and black people are asking her wait but you all invaded africans like you all invaded them still stole and all that and still stealing to this very moment and you are asking us to stop going to europe and she was like that was long ago and i am saying it was not long ago and you guys never even left you all are still stealing what is going on in Congo and some other African countries that have uh, 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 mineral resources. You all are still stealing from them to this very moment. And you have the ghost to come out to tell us that it was long ago. If you are if you are strong enough, remove that mask you're wearing. We want to see your face. Then we know how to address you. Let's get into this. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are pouring in from everywhere at the moment? They should accept them. They should just be like, oh, come, take our homes, take they our They should jobs, accept take Africans. Everything. Because when you guys came in mass to mm -hmm. Africa. But that was so long ago. I don't, that was, even that was so long ago. Anymore. But your companies are still there looting yeah. Africa. Perhaps. Neo-colonialism. Perhaps. You are still there stealing our resources. Mm. Using our resources to develop your countries and you don't want us to come here. You are asking how you should you guys react when well, we come here. Example, how are we supposed to, to react? Imagine a thief steals your television, your TV, and you go to his house to, to watch a soccer game. How should the thief react? <laughs> exactly. Just be quiet. They should just be like, oh, come, take our homes. Take they our I don't know what race this lady is, but she talking about Africans coming into whatever country she from. I don't even need to know what race, ethnicity you are. I know for a fact your people did the same shit to Africans. Now take that mask off and drop your real name so I can address you properly. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are poor? So the guy goes on to make a really good point to counter her, right? He says, what is, what are you talking about? Your nation steals the resources of our nations. And so our nations who aren't able to properly profit off of these particular resources end up coming to your nation in order to benefit from our own resources that were just taken by you. An excellent counterpoint. But I want to add a little bit more to it because I want to point out that most refugee crises are a direct result of Western powers and European nations. The U.S. included, right? We are the reason for many of regions being destabilized, causing a refugee crisis. And in a lot of ways, it's not just the proxy wars and all that stuff that I'm always talking about. It's also other things such as climate change, right? Climate change, the big proponents of climate change are the major superpowers and European nations who are creating so much pollution. Our industrial revolution is still something that has an effect on the global climate crisis today. And only now when these other black and brown nations are trying to develop, right, and they're doing it in such a way that's very similar to the way that these European nations, including the U.S., were able to develop, what ends up happening? They end up being criticized and told they're not doing it quite right, even though they're doing it in similar fashion to the other nations who did it before. And as climate change continues, right, people are being unfortunately pushed out of their homes or know that there is going to be a time where the water line is going to come up a little bit further and they're going to lose a lot of land. And because they're going to lose a lot of land, they're trying to get to other nations where it would be safe. It is interesting to see that the very cause of these particular problems don't want to do anything to help the people who are direct victims of it. But you know what the really, really screwed up thing is? I know that all I just said is pretty messed up, but it gets even more interesting when you think of it from this perspective. If you're an American citizen, you benefit so little from these atrocities and horrible acts that it is really kind of sad because we too live in a destitute situation. We deal with an economic oppression situation. And that economic oppression is something enforced by our corporate elites and masters uh, here, right? And so these guys, they go out, they steal the resources of other nations and make incredible amounts of profits. 
And those profits don't really trickle down to the American citizenry. So very few people actually benefit at the end of the day. So it's odd to me that when we have immigrants coming here, we're looking at them like they're the cause of our problems. In fact, there are people who say immigrants are the reason for all this crime. When in reality, in most cases, most crime is committed by actual citizens. And immigrants tend to be the ones who are following the law to a T because they fear deportation. Additionally, wrongfully here, a lot of people don't think immigrants pay taxes, which they do. We pay taxes on everything. How would they get away from it? Anyway, the point being that if you bear down on all these different nations across the world, these black and brown countries, and you take everything from them, you cause them to have destabilization, you put in power the most far right lunatics who cause violence to happen and break out by supporting them with your funding, your foreign funding all over the world, causing all of these freaking travesties and horrible actions. You would think you would take responsibility and help the people that you end up displacing. And then if you're not going to help Help those people at least use your ill-gotten gains to help your own and neither of which is really being done so i say again if that is your mentality if you have any anti-immigrant sentiment in you just know that i unequivocally am diametrically opposed to your mentality and i think you're very wrong and it's a very evil way to think we are human beings this planet is our birthright we should not be told when and where to go places or being told what places belong to who especially if the person who's the most apt to say stuff like that is the one who stole it through violence and threat of force from indigenous people and then I just want to add another point. As somebody who went to Africa, I went to Kenya, and it was a beautiful trip. I love the people there. It was a really great thing. I do plan to go and see many more nations on the continent. However, there's a thing that I found really sad, and I made a video about it before, but I'll say this again. When I went to Kenya and I saw all these churches and so many people who were Christian, I don't have a problem with people being Christian. I'm not an anti-theist of any sort, right? Believe what you want to believe. Find solace in the things you find solace. Just don't harm anyone. But the thing is, when I see a church in a place like that, where they have traditions, beliefs, and ideologies, and cultures that predate the religion that was forced upon them by Europeans, right? When I think about that, it hurts my heart because it's like you were forced into this position through rifle and Bible, through colonialism, right? And what was lost? What was replaced by this? And then on top of that, you are forced to sacrifice such deep and important sentiments of your own existence, your own tradition, your own culture, your own values, your own language, right? Your own religion. All of these different belief structures that were forced upon you by your would-be oppressor and the person stealing all your resources so that your nation can't properly capitalize on it. Through all that, and then after your situation has become totally unattainable, you're like, hey... I need to get out of here. I need to go somewhere safe. The people who forced this all upon you, all right, the way that you speak being something forced upon you originally, right, the religion you believe forced upon you, they look at you and say you're too different to come here. And I would get it if it was just as difficult, right, across the board. If you're a European nation or like in the case of the United States, if it was hard for all immigrants to come and immigrate here, I wouldn't be so against it but the unfortunate truth is it's exceptionally harder if you're black and brown to immigrate to european nations u.s included it's not hyperbole when i've said it before that western powers are totally okay with genocide as long as it's not them and the last point i want to make is when it comes to the resources and a lot of people will say oh well if we have all these immigrants we won't have enough for ourselves the reality is there's plenty of resources, including food to go around. Again, the United States is one of the biggest proponents of food waste. And it's important to realize that it's not that there's not enough resources for everyone to be happy and enjoy. There just isn't enough resources to satiate the absolute greed of the corporate elite. Should we react that you guys are coming to get a piece of the pie? When are your governments going to fix the issues in your what this lady is saying here is in reference to African leaders and the African continent in itself, saying that they should stop migrating to Europe because they should sort out their own countries first and let the leaders sort out their, their country. And it's nothing to do with the West. But she's overlooking the fact that, as this guy pointed out, if you see the whole interview, that the West has always been a thorn in Africa's side. They say they're helping, but they're not. 
they try to dictate, they take in natural resources, they try to put, put legislation against them in many different forms, shapes and forms. Now I'll give you an example. With Niger, the other day, or Niger, Niger said, can you remove your French military because you're not really doing anything and all we've found out is that you're still in our natural resources, mainly gold. The French said, no, we're not doing that. It took two other African countries to unite with that country and the Russian force to threaten France to remove their military. And they still haven't removed their military. They said, we will remove our military in a short period of time. Not to mention all these other leaders, African leaders have been assassinated. The problem with this girl, she's talking and she hasn't done her research and the fact that she has to cover her face means she can't really stand behind what she's saying. Because if you, clearly if you do, you would show your face and say it with your chest proud and strong. So please, if you go on anybody's platform, have and do your research first, know what you're talking about and always try and see the things from other people's points of view. Because if Africa was to stop giving the West any natural resources and close their border and kick out all the militaries, even the embassies and the high commissions from Europe and America, there will be a war instantly. Because without Africa's natural resources, 33.3% 30, of the world's natural resources, known natural resources, that means there's still natural resources there that they haven't found, Europe and America are going to be in problems guys came in mass to mm -hmm. Africa. But that was so long ago. I don't, that, was, even that, that looks awfully familiar. You know, to my American eyes, not really so long ago, because it's still here. I think just the color's different, right? The mask. I'm, I'm asking about the mask. So what's your name? Is it Katrina? Casey? Or Kylie? Is, is that is, is that your name? The ocean may separate us, but the sentiment is the same. So why don't you just take the hood, I mean the uh, mask off. Just take it off so we can see you. Be proud about what you have to say. Casey, Kaylee, Kristen. See, yellow is not the color for you. Pink isn't either. Just next time, buy a white one. You guys came in mass to mm -hmm. Africa. But that was so long ago. I don't even that was Perfect example. It's cool when they did it. It's a problem when we do it. They're afraid that we're going to take their stuff and take their homes. Y'all did it. We won't take anything. We will build with whatever we with. But not like y'all. She said that was so long ago. <laughs> We're not bringing it up right now. Boy, entitlement. Entitlement. Mm -mm -mm. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are poor? Y'all niggas gotta stop biting into that bullshit, bro. This conversation has no depth, no comp. These niggas faking that shit, and you see it, bro. They're not strong enough to face the camera, bro. And they, this nigga got the same motherfucker on. Talking about these so-called topics, nigga, with this mask on, bro. It's fucking bait every time, nigga. It's, you know it's a white lady under there saying some complete utter bullshit, and he still bring the same motherfucker home, bro. They working together and saying some bullshit. Y'all niggas stop going for that weak ass bait, bro. That's even if the shit they was talking about was some real shit, bro. They're not they're not trying to solve it, bro. They're just saying it so they can act it's acting, nigga. You hear this this nigga talking ooh, and with the accent and shit, bro. It's fucking fake, my nigga. Come on, be one hundred, nigga. And and bro, stop telling people that but like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are poor? The same thing that the Africans did. Y'all supposed to do the same thing. Yeah. 
But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are pouring in from everywhere at the moment? They should accept them. They should just be like, oh, come, take our homes, take they the jobs, take Africans. everything. Because when you guys came in mass to mm -hmm. Africa... But that was so long ago. I don't, that was, cannot even that bring was it so long now ago. Anymore. But your companies are still there looting yeah. Africa. Perhaps. Neo-colonialism. Perhaps. You are still there stealing our resources, mm. using our resources to develop your countries, and you don't want us to come here. You are asking how you should you guys react when well, we come here. Example, how are we supposed to, to react? Imagine a thief steals your television, your TV, and you go to his house to, to watch a soccer game. How should the thief react? Exactly. Just be quiet. Number one, what in the coloniality is going on here? We got a lot to unpackage, don't we? Number two, what y'all seen right there was projection. Y'all know when the scramble of Africa happened, the Europeans expected for the Africans to just let them come in and take their homes and take their resources, just let them in. Number three, let's literally think about this trick of time these folks be playing with us. So the scramble of Africa that started in the late 1800s and ended in the 1914 year. It's too far in the past, but we can talk about Judea and Romans and people being expelled out of the Middle East 2,000 years ago, and that matters. Make it make sense. Number four, for y'all that don't know, the scramble of Africa is when European power sat down and drunk tea and ate biscuits and really chummed up with each other about which parts of the African continent that they was going to take. Number five. Europe colonized all of Africa and then complained about African immigration. What in the caucasity, man? Number six. It don't sit right with me that she did all this, was so condescending and dismissive and just gaslighted by colonial violence, wearing a poo shyster mask. Number seven. Y'all don't find it suspicious that she's talking in their European language, he's talking in their European language, and she's talking about what the Europeans should do about the African presence. Meanwhile, he can't even express himself without thinking through the European rhetoric. Number seven, neocolonialism is the use of economic, political, cultural or other pressures to control or influence other countries, especially former dependencies. Number eight. He literally explained that that's what the Europeans do. Your company's still here. You see what I'm saying? When y'all think about what happened in the Congo, when you learn about Patrice Lumumba. It's not ironic that the instability is Western European caused. And those are the main people that benefit from the instability, the Europeans. My last and final point, reiterating two points I already made. When she asked the question, what are Europeans supposed to do when Africans is pouring in every minute? Remember this little history right here. You see what I'm saying? And when she say it happened so long ago, think about how European colonial powers always use the trick of time to talk about whatever happened to them. It's so recent. You see what I'm saying? But whatever happened to us, it's too far in the past. Free Palestine, free Congo, free Sudan. Off, oh, I'm playing. Education is elevation. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are... It's the same way how your people your ancestors, and many other Europeans who were known as colonizers. They came in ships, they came in fleets, they came in boats. And they came on the land, didn't even say, excuse me, put a flag on there and said, we own it. Okay? England was known for that. The Dutch was known for that. Germany was known for that. The French was known for that. But the main ringleader was England. Because she told them what areas they can occupy and they had to pay her taxes. Okay? It's the same way how the Spaniards went to Jamaica West Indies. Yeah, they were once in, on Jamaica West Indies. And it's the same way how they went and colonized all of South America except for Guyana. Okay? And because the English said no. And you know why they said no? Because Guyana have cruel oil. And that's the largest natural resources in Guyana. You, why do you think England took Guyana and made them part of Caribbean? Okay? Let's, you know, how about... She's from Spain, from what I understand, right? First of all, she would not be talking to me in no mask. Because as a black person, when you see a person that's outside of your race and they're wearing a mask, that's Ku Klux Klan. So that's a racist statement that she did right there. And then for the man to sit there and entertain her with her ignorance... Her, her whole podcast should be off the air. But you see, people like her can stay on there because 
they just, these are the type of people that they have their superior complex. Okay. Even on this app too, cause she's on the app and she mostly play all her stuff. And some of her stuff is very racist. And then she has a dry sense of humor for a person that has people coming as her guests. I like when Offset pretty much told her in his own way. And he gave her the same dry sense of humor. And he gave her the same... <clears throat> he answered her back in a rhetorical formation. And I, and I think that was the best thing that he ever done. Okay? Because that's what they need to talk to her. Because if you have a guest... You have to entertain your guests and make them feel comfortable. Even if you're a journalist and you're doing research, you're not supposed to be asking them any rhetorical questions. <clears throat> you ask them questions that's logical. When you're doing that, and this is attention to Vlad Lad too, because he has a way of being very disrespectful to his guests too, but his guests don't really take it because Bootsy still keep on coming there and coming there as high. And all, he, all he's doing is just feeding him. Public information of being like a master, informing um, a master going from all from slave to slave plantation and handing him the information. I mean, that's how that's my analogy when I see Bootsy coming on Vlad Lad show. Now, moving right along, this young woman here, one time she was on the show and she had her baby and she was breastfeeding her baby in front of the man. To me, that's not professionalism. And then she could say, OK, that's my show. These are the things that I'm talking about. You have people like them who wanted to be on a podcast and you make them, you entertain them and make them get popular. And who are the ones that's making her get popular? Minorities and black people. She wonder, she wants to know why Africans and um, people that come out of their diaspora are coming and migrating. First of all, if you know your history, the colonizers came over there and not only they, they did genocide, they did segregation, and they did a whole bunch of stuff to make the people them not feel comfortable living in their place. They took over their land. They took over their house. So what kind of question is that? It's way of history repeating itself. The only difference is now it's the Africans are going and tr trying to find another place to live because the place that they're living in is indentured. Is dilapidated. It's taken away from them. So for them to come and migrate to another place, which you guys don't like, how did you feel how they felt? They didn't ask you to come over. You invited yourselves. And I'm talking about your ancestors and many people that look like you and talk like you. Okay? And this is not a racist statement. This is not a biased statement. This is not a fascist statement. This is actual fact. This is history that they don't want to, that they want to keep hitting. And keep under the table. Okay. Now. In the next time. When you ask a question. You need to do your research. As a standard journalist. Or someone that's getting into the podcast. So the, the gentleman did the right thing. To answer you back. Because he said. It's the same way. When you guys came in mass fleets. And ships. And you turn around. And took it over. And claim that you had a piece of paper. And then how you going to give the people. Them a piece of paper. When they don't even understand your language. And you don't even understand their language either. So to me, you guys had captured their stuff. Okay. The difference between the, the natives of Africa and many people that's coming to migrate. They're not trying to capture anything. They just want a proper place to live. Because to tell you the truth, the West is the one that destroyed their, their, area, their homeland. You go to Mexico. Ask, look at their history. Why is it that the Mexicans are coming to America? OK, you got to look back to the West who came there and colonized and started the whole thing with the drug war. You go to Colombia, same thing. You go to many places in South America, in um, South America. You take in the Caribbean, what these people knew about guns, how the guns came in there. And it's the same thing in Congo. You guys turned around and took over the Congo, including China and many others and made mining fields. You hear Takashiki talking about he got mining fields over there. So I wouldn't be surprised if those pe he putting those people in bondage of slavery. And then they come on the podcast and they talk about these things. And the government keeps a blind eye because guess what? He gives them a share. Okay? He's wealthy. The government's wealthy. Everybody's wealthy except for the common people who lives there in that country. 
So these people are trying to find places to vacate because they want a peace of mind. So what do you think they're trying to look for a holiday in to celebrate? Come on now. Some of her questions makes no sense. She doesn't make no sense. Her prejudice is the thing that's stirring her mind. Her prejudice is making her ignorant. Okay? And it's many people that's just like her. All right? And, you know, FYI to our fellow black people. I don't care how much she's paying you. I don't care how much is the studio time or the, or the industry is telling you to go there. I would not even give her the time or day, whether she wanted me there or not. Because to me, I will give her a debate that she would not even like. I will make her feel like she needs to go back to school and learn something and learn something besides asking rhetorical questions, you know? And then she has to know the standard of speaking to people too. That's the thing. And Vadlad has to do that too, because even some of the questions he asks, it doesn't take, it's not a journalist question. He talks to people, certain people in a certain type of way. And then even some of the people that when they ask him, he, they kind of have to look back and say, is he talking to me? But you know what? I can't blame him from talking to you guys like that because you guys take yourself to go to places like that. Okay, but you would never go into a podcast to entertain with your own people and have an intellectual conversation with them. But you want to entertain them and give them ratings and alcohol and put money in their pocket. Make that make sense. Are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are poor? All right, I had to make this two, three minute, probably four minute video, four minute long video. All right, so chick was like. Just go back and watch the video if you, if you think I ain't saying the shit exactly how it's supposed to be said. But anyway, the chick was like, what are we supposed to do with these Africans trying to come over into the country? It's like, what European supposed to do? We supposed to allow them to come in, you feel me? Take our jobs, take our land. The same shit y'all did. And then she was like, it was so long ago when old bro bought that shit up. No, the fuck it was. No, it wasn't. My great grandma is 96. We go back 96 years. That'll give us around about 19, 20, 19, 30 or something, right? Then you go off from her being born, this is 1926. You'll go back to her mama and daddy when they was children, right? 1800s. We already in the 1800s. That's, that, I don't went what? Two, three generations. 1800s. Go back to their motherfucking parents. Almost beginning of the 1800s. Go back again. 17. Back again. So we talking what? Seven generations? Six, seven generations? When they was doing this shit? And you tell that was so long ago. Man, shut up. Shut that shit up. Look, bro. You don't supposed to say nothing. You don't supposed to say nothing. Y'all literally went over into Africa, right? Stuck your hands in the resources, in the ground to get the resources, right? And I see if it was, so you could have used that. It was so long ago if y'all would just stuck your hands in the resources, grab some resources, then ran off. Like a little raccoon, when they snatch food, they had that shit in both their hands, and they hop up on their back legs, and they kind of scurry off tonight. It would have been cool. You could have used that. But instead, y'all didn't do that. What you did was you stuck your hands in the ground, grabbed the resources, went and put them in this box over here, came back with your military in the area you was getting the resources from, made sure your military people was like, don't let none of these motherfuckers who lived here come in until we get all this shit. And you still ain't got all that shit, right? So y'all still over there. That was so long ago, but y'all still over there. That's, that's the crazy shit. And then when people need help, y'all be like, man, you don't get no help from us. Even though all your resources come from over there. If this ain't the pot calling the motherfucking kettle black. Man, look. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's all you got to do. That's all you can do. Because we was really on some type of time where we just taking shit back over. Taking our stuff back. Where the fuck would y'all have to go? I know some of y'all be like, oh, we go back to England. England ain't belong to y'all. Rome ain't belong to y'all. Greece ain't belong to y'all. Y'all got one specific area that y'all came out of and people found out about y'all. If you go back there to the area, we'll we leave y'all alone. 
I'm telling you, it ain't shit over there. <laughs> it ain't shit in that area. That's why y'all left that area to come into intermingle with everybody else. And you had no resources over there. So you decided you was going to come learn from everybody. Then once you learned the shit, you used that shit as a, as a vice to attack. Everything and everyone that then taught you destroyed those people and that information so nobody else could have it. You kept that shit by yourself and passed that shit down within your people. So no, you can't say anything. Let those people pass. Peace, man. But like, how are Europeans supposed to act or react when Africans are... When I saw that initial clip, I was hot as a firecracker. I was pissed. And then I realized, like, <laughs> look who's talking. Europeans came and colonized an entire continent. An entire continent. And now these people, who they left in distress and weakness... Now they're coming to you and saying they need help. And you have the nerve to say, what are you doing here? What the fuck were you doing there? And that is just a basic colonial European mindset. What are you doing in our country? What were you doing in their country? Stealing their land, stealing their customs, stealing their identity. And that mindset will never be broken if people like this do not learn to shut the fuck up. They should act the same way that Africans acted when they came to their country. When they came to Africa, they welcomed them instead of exiting them. So this is all I got from the V stitches. And when I saw the video, I was like, um, because she was like, it's been long ago. I mean, it hasn't been long ago. And you all are still around. You never left. And uh, you all are still tormenting Africa. You all destroying most of Africans, like, you know, destroy their countries. And then when they decide to migrate to European country, you all are crying. When you all mess them up already. I mean, it hasn't been long ago. And if you think you are brave and smart and wise enough, why are you wearing masks? I mean, you should remove the mask. Let's see. Who, let's see you. We want to know who we're talking to. We want to say hi to you. We want to greet you. I mean, you all always are ready to gaslight people and tell them it's been long ago. Get over it. Forget about it. And don't talk about it. We are going to keep talking about it. And black people, are Africans, most especially, will still migrate to your country. And who even said that when they migrate, they spoil? No, they are not spoiling anything. You all already spoiled most of their resources, and you all are still in their countries, ripping, ripping them off, and you want them to stop coming over. Nah, nah, babes. They're gonna keep coming. And moreover, the sky is wide enough for everybody to shine, or is huge enough to contain everybody. So they are, are we all not humans. We all are humans. So we are, we can go anywhere we want, we can go anywhere, like, you know, to establish and keep living our lives. Not until you all stop stealing from Africa. Look at Congo, Sudan, and other, other countries you all are stealing from. Killing, genocide, day in, day out. And you have the right to come and tell us that it's been long ago. Are you for, are you for real right now? It hasn't been long ago, and you all never left. You all are still around. Not until you all live completely, we can talk about it. But for now, you've got nothing to talk about. So let people be. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.